Welcome to Question Mark, a safe place to ask dangerous questions. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask about God, faith, the Bible, Christianity, science, world religions, you name it, go ahead and put that question in the comments below, and we'll be glad to get to those just as soon as we possibly can. But the question that we're asking today is, can Christians be possessed? all kinds of movies and dramas and claims unfold about the possession of a variety of different people. And those of us who say, you know what, I've trusted Jesus, I've got the Holy Spirit living in me, asked a bothersome question, can I be possessed as well? And let me give my real brief answer right away off the top here. No, nay, nonsense. If you need it in French, no. If you need it in Spanish, no way, Jose, you can't be possessed. But I would say that I think that possessed is the wrong word for us to be using. Because possessed implies ownership. Once you're owned by God, you can't be owned by anybody else. And so it's the wrong question for us to be asking. If you go back in the Bible and you read, what is the word that's used that's oftentimes translated demon-possessed? And you can find that in a lot of different places in the Bible. What's the word that's translated? It's a word that doesn't imply ownership at all. It's a word that may be best translated demonized. But truth be told, I don't really like the word demonized either. The reason is that we don't use that word in English very much, and if we were to use it, we would have to define it every time we use it, and that becomes very, very challenging. A word that I find far more helpful is the word influence. Can Christians be demonically influenced? And I think the answer to that question is yes, and in fact, we are demonically influenced every single day. So the question behind the question is, to what extent can we be influenced by the demonic arena? And I've come up with a seven-part scale that will help you to see just how much a person, perhaps you, have been influenced by the demonic world. Check this out. Now, before I go any further on this scale, let me be really clear to say that there are many forms of influence in our lives. There is the world, there is the flesh, that's your internal world, your internal voice. There are medical issues, there are counseling issues, there's issues of the heart. So to overdiagnose as demons might be problematic. But they are an aspect of what's very real in this world. And so we ask, have to ask the question, how in fact do they influence us and how deep does that influence go? Now, I've written up seven biblical illustrations that will illustrate seven different levels of influence that somebody might experience. On the softest level, this is the common end up here, and this is the extreme end down here. On the common end, what we all experience every day is world systems that have been influenced by the devil. Now, we see in the Bible, they oftentimes talk about Rome being one of those systems that in fact has been infested and used by the evil one to cause evil purposes. If you're looking at what pervades the entirety of the scripture as a world system, study the word Babylon. Starting all the way back at the Tower of Babel, going through the Babylonian Empire, and ending up in Revelation chapter 19 where it says, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Babylon symbolizes the world systems that are used by the enemy in order to wreak havoc in this world. And it could be governmental systems, it could be military systems, it could be entertainment or news or education. We see it happening in all different kind of systems in this world. And there's the systems by which the demonic forces use to create lies, negative messages, wrong-headed ideas that will get people astray from God. We all experience this every single day because we live in a broken world where the lies of the enemy are just common all around us. The second level of influence is simply temptation. And you know what temptation is. Temptation is when something that's bad looks all shiny and good. It's the idea that something that will wreck your life 
is actually appealing. And oftentimes the things that we get tempted by are actually quite tasty and satisfactory in the moment. If they weren't, then they wouldn't be a temptation anymore, but they're bad in the long run. I'm convinced that one of the key things that uh, the enemy tries to do to us is to tempt us to wreck our lives by making bad choices. Now, I want to emphasize that they can't make the bad choices for you, but they can whisper into your ears and make things that are awful look really good. This, in fact, is what happened in the Garden of Eden. That forbidden fruit, he said, oh, doesn't that look shiny and good for eating? And God's just afraid that if you eat that, you'll become more like him. He made it look shiny and good. Or in the wilderness, when the evil one was tempting Jesus, hey, Jesus was hungry, 40 days of fasting. Hey, why don't you just take that rock and make it into bread. It was a temptation, three different temptations that he brought. This is the common work of the enemy. The third arena is lies. The evil one would love to tell you lies about yourself, that you are worthless, that you're not worth forgiving, that God couldn't love somebody like you, that that other person in your life is not worth forgiving, that you should nurse that bitterness and resentment, that that thing that's evil is actually good, that that person who loves you is actually evil. These are the lies that he'll tell you all day long. John 8, 44 talks about he is a liar and the father of lies. I think if Jesus was around today, he would say, liar, liar, pants on fire. Liar, liar, headed to the lake of fire. It's just who he is. At the next level of demonic influence, you have trauma, trauma. And I think that the evil one acts particularly in vile ways around trauma. If you're somebody who's a war hero and you've been overseas and you've experienced some significant trauma, or if you're somebody who's a victim of sexual abuse, or if you've experienced somebody die who's very close to you, it is fascinating to me how much the evil one gets into people's brains right in the midst of trauma. And it seems like these lies and these temptations just lodge deeper into the soul and they create more havoc. In fact, if he can, in the middle of trauma, Create somebody who creates more trauma through his lies. This happens in perpetuating sexual abuse all the time, where those who are abused become abusers. He loves to see that happen. King Saul is an example of somebody who really went through all four of the last stages of demonic influence in his life, but in the trauma of warfare, of competition between generals, and of the pain of seeing someone young coming up through his ranks, he began a downward slide. Interestingly, Job experienced trauma to the worst degree as well, but he never headed this way. When you experience trauma, you can be somebody who's resilient or someone who walks down this path. All right, acting on lies is the next one. Acting on lies. It's not just that the lies were told to you, which is up here. It's that you believe them and actually start doing them. In the Bible, we find Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, lying to the Holy Spirit, listening to the evil one, and lying to the Holy Spirit on a financial matter, and it wound up getting them killed. But when we start to act on these lies, when we begin to follow those temptations and we say, I'm going to do them, not just be tempted by them, do them, it's like the evil one gets his claws in a little bit deeper. He rides on our back a little bit closer, and his Thoughts become our thoughts as we justify and integrate because we're doing the wrong things. Well, after we begin acting on lies, there become, become some personality change. When you begin to justify the things that you have been doing wrong, your personality begins to change. You can become withdrawn. You can wind up leaving friends that you've had in the past. You can have wild mood swings. You can go through depression and many things in your personality. You become wild or you become evil or you wind up becoming somebody who tempts other people. When your personality begins to change, you know that the level of demonic influence is one step deeper. And then finally, down at the most extreme end is violence. When you begin hearing voices that are telling you to do violent things and when you think about self-harm or exhibit self-harm, when you have suicidal ideation, 
when you think about killing animals or killing other human beings or causing pain in them, that's a sign that the de demonic influence has become very deeply integrated into your life. Remember, his agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can get you to do that through violence, that's where he would go. Now, the truth is, most people who are Christians have some kind of influence, but it generally stays in these first three categories. Most Christians say that as I walk in the light, as I trust in Jesus, as I do the right thing, I'll experience these things, but I can say no. I can resist the devil and he will flee. But sometimes people give themselves to deeper and deeper and deeper levels of influence that cause intentional prayer or healing ministry or deliverance ministry to even be necessary at that point. So the answer to our question, can Christians be possessed? No way. But can Christians be influenced? They certainly can. And you should watch out because there's an enemy out there who prowls around seeking for someone to be devoured. And you do not need to be his victim. Jesus, who lives inside of you, is stronger than the one who lives in this world. And the truth of the matter is, you can just say no to him. You can tell him to go the other way. You can make choices that are the right choices and avoid that influence in your life. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you'd love to see more like it, perhaps you'd like to start with this video right here. And if you love these videos, it would be fantastic if you would like, subscribe, or ring the bell for notifications.